Hello everyone, this is Balaji Kaya signing in for Brain Smart Labs. Hi, this is Angi, Mangi, and Sangi. And together we're going to show you today's state of degree, IT, and jobs. Brain Smart Labs today, you don't know, it is the number one online training institute in India. Wow, sorry, hoy to. You say it as number one, it will become number one, na? Viewers, viewers should say it as number one. Gotai ta? Purunja da? Telsin da? Yeah, yeah, I know. For that, you all should watch my video and appreciate, right? Allah, you need to know this video. Ah, ma, you don't have to watch this video. Oh, no. You don't have to watch this video. Brain Smart Labs is offering you the best video content to improve your programming skills for you to get a job. What? Yes, the same job which is offered to you by a company in your placement drives. You know, job? You know, company? You mean, placement? Ah, that's it. You have to look at the mirror in your face. You have to look at the mirror in your face. कर दो क्यूबिकल अली कंप्यूटर कर सके जॉब ओनो ना वो एक तगड़ी बेनो विदाउट दैट तगड़ी ए कंपनी ओनर्स विल नॉट लेट यू इन देर गेट आल्सो ये मन कौन डाउ मा गुरिंची मैं मो इंजीनियर्स बी ओम बी बी चेस्ट नोडो बी दिला चट्टा दर के अटला दरकता रो नी दे मी स्पेशल लकड़ा पक्का वेस्ट बॉडी � अदे अदे निम प्रॉब्लम मो। You think you know everything, right? यें गोत निम गया, निम फिंडा। You know 15 lakh engineering students pass out all over India every year. There are 3000 plus engineering colleges in India. In that your college is also one among them. The states of Andhra and Telangana only constitute up to 700 engineering colleges. A famous newspaper survey says 35 percent of the students who pass out are simply left behind unemployed. इन 65 परसेंट एम्प्लॉयमेंट आकते दिया ला, नम गदरल कैसा सीखा था पा? ले गुबाल्डो, the survey also says 40 परसेंट ऑफ़ डोस हु गेट अ जॉब आर टेरिबली अंडरपेड विथ लो सैलरीज लाइक 6,000, 8,000 एंड 10,000. That is correct. Many of them are working as sales representatives, BPO operators, day shift, evening shift. अस्तेला या क्या? They are all working in midnight shift also. बेका तरा जॉब हो? बड़ा. Logical Indian had posted an article on Facebook. It said a mechanical engineer in Delhi has started riding an auto rickshaw for his living to feed his family. Kerala dhar Kerala la kitta burutte. Oh no! 60,000 BE seats are filled in Karnataka, and nearly 50,000 engineers come out of college every year. You think all 50,000 will get a high-paying job in the same year? A survey in Tamil Nadu says 3.3 lakh BE and MTech students come out of college every year. And guess what? In the same survey, they say 70% of them will go unemployed. Allah Guru, if you have a company, you don't have to do anything with us. But why don't you have to do anything with us? Why don't you have to do anything with us? The problem is skill deficit. All these graduates go unemployed because your college will be teaching you something, your company will be working on some other thing, you are not getting a job because your skills and their requirement will not go matching. People do BE and M.Tech with so much aspiration in life. But once they come out of college and do not get a job, everyone has only one common thing to blame. Th, ya kaadru engineering manadwa. Ama, yaduk kaga in engineering padne no. Aunu, yandu kani engineering che samo. Cool down, cool down. We Indians na, we are very good at blaming. The problem will be with us, but we will be blaming someone else if things don't meet our expectation. Allah guru, college no ro company ke baka dung pata madli landra, or nam tapa. Ama, yang kedua na tapu, awunu, madem tapu, adz adz ni problem wa. You are not getting job because there is a huge gap between knowledge acquired in college and knowledge required in industry. Ye na gap a, so pasar ya gel guru. For you to understand what is this gap, I have to give you a correct picture on what is IT industry today. Imagine, in some corner of the globe there is a country, and they are having a railway system running. At some point of time, the government of that country decides to provide online ticketing feature to support their customers. Now, to go online and to give these special features, what do they need? Software? Very good. Now, answer this. You all know how banks got centralized approximately 15 years ago. 
before that centralization took place they used to maintain huge huge ledgers to record all our transactions now as their business increased they wanted to give their customers some of the prominent features today like online banking mobile banking etc now for the banks to provide the above features what do they need software adbhutam now let us take one more example you all know that tata and birla are all big enterprises in india whatever business they might be doing they need a pakka lekka for every saman coming in and going out now to manage their accounts production sales in a better way what do they need software guru software but my question is who will make these softwares hang badari the it trend in united states of america started in the early 90s the companies then used to hire a few engineers train them a few programming languages and as per the client requirement they used to design a software and deliver it for a huge sum of cash now there started your first it job 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 the it sector slowly grew as most of the developing countries wanted to automate their processes using software soon the demand for it jobs went to a peak as the companies then started hiring more and more engineers train them sufficiently and started deploying them to various software projects the problem actually started in the year 2008 as the market started to take a hit due to recession oh no the companies then started to do cost cutting as they did not want their money to be invested down these engineers trust me it was really hard for them to train these engineers and then deploy to various software projects as it turned out to be a huge financial burden most of the job offers which were made initially were turned down and the no vacancy board was visible in almost all the cities as there were no jobs no jobs no jobs no jobs Aww. now you only tell why will a company want to hire you a company is running a business not some dharmachatra to get some work done you need skilled labor you can also call them skilled resources most of the big big it companies will only hire candidates with good academic record who are good in communication and also who are from a reputed engineering college reason is simple they want to give you training before they deploy you into the projects unfortunately colleges which are away from the cities are completely neglected and hardly a few students get selected based on their off campus interview performance adu correct eh no why will a company invest on an average student requirement is this much we know only this much that's why they always go to reputed engineering colleges and choose the best whom they want you are right so to get a job a candidate's productivity is required and for you to be productive you going to need programming skills which are very much mandatory today okay we all agree that we need programming skills but there are so many programming languages today which one should we go for now that's really a good question the current it industry is divided into two types that is core it and ites also known as information technology enabled services the ites constitutes only of bpos kpos technical writing etc which usually supports a software company from the back end here in this sector we do not require any notable programming skills whereas in core it sector as you have already experienced you can never ever proceed without having a relevant programming skill the core it sector today can be further divided into two types that is system side programming and application side programming system side programming is a stream where you will be writing code to build an actual system like number 1 with the help of vlsi programming you will be designing microchips which are an integral part of a computer system number 2 With the help of embedded C and Unix you will be programming smaller devices like your routers modem security systems etc and manage its input output operations and number 3 programming a large scale operating system for your main machine like your windows linux mac etc where all of the above involve system side programming system side programming is an excellent stream for you to get into and you can make a really good career out of it but the main issue lies in the job market where hardly 10 out of 100 engineers can get into it in this field mainly you will be working on languages like c c++ and unix and to get a job here it totally depends on how intelligent you are and sometimes what university degree you hold 
coming to the other side of core IT industry where the grass is more greener and you have plenty of opportunities in today's job market which is none other than the application side programming. If you are asking me what is an application? An application is a set of programs written by a programmer to simplify one's particular business requirement. For example, if one's requirement is to type a letter and take a printout, he has to use an application by name Microsoft Word which is a set of programs to fulfill one's particular business requirement. If one's requirement is to send an email to a client or a friend, he or she has to use an application by name Gmail which is again a set of programs to fulfill one's particular business requirement. Likewise, you have applications like WhatsApp to chat on phone and Candy Crush to sit, play and enjoy which is a pure business requirement <coughs> for them. The application development can be broadly classified into four types. Starting with number one, the standalone application. A software application wherein you install one copy of an application in a single system and only one user can access it at a given instant of time can be termed as a standalone application. For example, Microsoft Word, Adobe Photoshop are nothing but applications that are installed in one single system and only one user can access it at a given instant of time. Such kinds of applications are known as the standalone applications. Next we have a very important type of application that we all have to know, a web based application wherein you install a copy of this application in one big system also known as server and many users can access this application at a given instant of time. For example Gmail, Twitter, Facebook, they are nothing but applications installed in servers which are present in Ireland, Sweden and Alaska but around the globe millions of users access it at a given instant of time. Such kinds of applications are known as the web based applications. Many modern day banks and big big enterprises like McDonald's, Domino's etc. use web based applications to manage their customer records, staff records and all their financial data in a single place also known as a centralized server. With the use of web based applications, managing things for a director or a CEO would be very easy as any data he needs before taking a right decision would be right there at his fingertips. Even though the solution what web based applications gave was simply outstanding, the market started expecting more from it. Consider a railway application wherein you get to book your tickets online. But to book the tickets online, you need to pay the money and unfortunately, your railway service provider does not run a bank where you have kept all your money stacked up. The biggest challenge now for a developer is how to make the online payment happen. For an online payment to actually happen, first the railway web application should interact with your banking web application and then it has to process your payment. One web application interacting with another web application now. How the hell can that happen? That brings me to explain you application type number 3, the distributed application wherein a developer uses technologies like web services and EJB to communicate between one web application with the other web applications. The very concept of online shopping today is possible because of distributed applications. Wow, online shopping is because of distributed application na? Cool, am I going to learn that too? Yes, yes, you are going to learn from the very basic Hello World program till building of top class distributed application in my course only if you allow me to continue. Ok, go on. The fourth type of applications are your mobile based applications which are booming in the market today as everyone want technology at their fingertips. With the help of mobile apps provided by banks, I can transfer you 15,000 rupees sitting at this remote location. But I will not transfer, that's a different issue. But still, I can do it. Babo, you are only telling various types of applications present. But you are not telling what are the things that we need to learn for us to get a job. Koncho madhi kuda chapta va. To build an application you need to be ready with two things. One is front end, other one is back end. Yemi, front to back ah. <laughs> Let me explain. An application as I said is a set of programs which are built on logics. The core logic of an application will always be at the application back end. 
Some of the most popular languages and frameworks used to build core logics today are Java JWE and C Sharp.NET. So it is mandatory for you to learn either Java JWE or C Sharp.NET to survive in today's software industry. Most of the server based applications today will have a database management system that basically constitutes of tables, views and indexes which in turn store the entire data coming from your application. There are many database vendors in the market today, but the most commonly used and the most popular ones are Oracle, MySQL and PostgreSQL. For our application to interact with the database, we use something called as a structured query language, in short known as SQL. So as a programmer, it is a mandatory thing for you to learn any one of the SQL database to build a good quality and a well-performing application. Now once the application at the backend is ready, your application has to communicate with the user to fetch all his inputs via a web browser and to display an output in the form of color color web pages. These color color screens what you are going to interact via a web browser is known as graphical user interface in short known as GUI. Building a quality GUI is known as web designing and in today's software industry it's almost becoming mandatory for developers to know at least basics of web designing. And to do this, we have programming languages like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Ajax, jQuery, AngularJS, etc. which you all may have to learn. The above programming languages come in your front end. And if you are very good at drawing, painting and other creative activities, this career really suits you well. Dude, what is this Android programming? What we have to learn if we want to pursue our career in that? Android programming comes under mobile application development and it is in a huge boom today. Oh really? Basically Android is an operating system for your smartphones which is now currently owned by Google. To build an Android application, Google has given you an SDK by name Android Standard Development Kit. To work on this standard development kit, you must and should learn Java language as Android SDK libraries are completely built on Java platform. So to learn Android programming, you must and should learn Java as there is no escape. And hey, I forgot to mention one more thing. To work on mobile application front end, you need to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, AngularJS, 3JS, which are all killer frameworks today used to build a best quality Android application. So people who are interested in mobile application development, all of the above said technologies or programming languages are mandatory. Nowadays, there are many shortcuts like drag and drop tools to build your Android applications. During production time, you will get thousands of bugs to resolve. And to do that, your drag and drop tool will not come for your rescue, but your basics will. If you learn the above programming languages, work with it and then join an IT company, nobody can shake you in any way as you are strong at your basics. Guru, there is a huge demand for software testing today. Now what is that? If at all we want to pursue our career in software testing, what we have to learn? Whenever a software is being developed in a company, an application is always built by a software developer and an application is always tested by a software tester. We didn't have this role that prominent during 1990s as a developer only was made to test his application and to fix his bugs. Now as the software industry grew, a huge demand for software testers were created as a developer all by himself could not manage the task of testing an application. As the size of an application started to grow bigger and bigger, the number of bugs which used to appear in each testing phase also started to grow proportionally. The number of bugs increased so much that a developer could not handle the pressure of finding the bugs and resolving it all by himself. So the role of a software tester is to use an application for multiple times using various test case scenarios, document it, find the bugs present and report it back to the development team for them to sort out the issue. This is to ensure the quality of software that is being developed is at its best. And today, a software tester plays a vital role in a company's production cycle. There are two ways of testing an application today. One is manual testing, where a software tester manually tests an application by trying out each and every web page using various test case scenarios. The above process of manual testing is of course very much time consuming. But believe it or not, this form of testing constitute all the basics of software testing today. 
A person who is aspiring to become a software tester must and should learn manual testing as an integral part of his curriculum. There is one more way to test an application which involves very less effort by a software tester. Here a software tester automates his test cases using a programming language like Java for it to find out all the bugs all by itself and then report back to him. This process is called as automation testing and today we have a wonderful tool by name Selenium which is no doubt very powerful at the same time very popular among all testing tools. But here there is a catch. To work with Selenium once again you will be needing Java and JavaScript to build automated test cases without which your dreams of becoming a software tester are over. I keep hearing from various sources that big data and Hadoop are in a huge boom today. Now what is it actually? I have told you all applications store data in something called as a database. A database will contain information of millions of customers who will be using that application. You might have noticed while chatting with your friend on WhatsApp or Facebook, you say to your friend that you want to buy a Nike shoes. After sending that message when you open a web browser, you will see an ad on Nike shoes or an offer related to that. You will then start wondering how the hell did it happen so instantly. You might also wonder how Facebook came to know that you want to buy a Nike shoes. This is all possible because of data analytics. Data analytics? Now what is that? Data analytics is a process wherein we use certain frameworks like Hadoop and Big Data to mine the customer data, analyze it and then send it back to relevant marketing team as these leads will help them to target their next customers. Wow! Yeah, but there is a catch. To work on Hadoop and Big Data, again here you need to know Core Java in depth. Yemi, ikkudu kuda Core Java na? Very true. So Core Java becomes mandatory if you want to learn web application development, distributed application development, mobile application development using Android, software testing, and to learn data analytic frameworks like Hadoop and Big Data. Yappa, Java is not important unta na gotheer lila. Yes. And that is why I am going to start teaching you basics of Java language followed by Core Java and SQL database in my first cycle of videos. Dude, my brother keeps telling there is a huge demand for SAP and ERP. What is it actually? Mm. You will get all your valuable information from your brother, sister, cousin, uncle in America, auntie in Africa, but you will never listen to me. The software industry today is so vast. It has many small small fields which will barbad your career like anything. And why is that? Because you only listen to your uncle and auntie, but not me. ERP actually means Enterprise Resource Planning and SAP gives you an excellent platform to build resource planning applications. Using an ERP software, big big enterprises like Bajaj, Tata, Birla etc. can manage all the resources plan their next production cycle, keep a track on their finances, revenues, etc. and do much more things. These are very expensive softwares which are tailor-made to suit each industry where only big big enterprises can afford. If at all you directly get a job as a fresher in SAP or a SAP based application, you are very lucky as you will be having a very good future, career, money, etc. But if you deliberately want to jump into ERP just because your uncle told and auntie told, Satri makla. Each ERP certification costs you lakhs of rupees. ERP certifications are different for different domain. For you to get a job in that particular domain what you have done, you might have to wait for a long long time. Well, if you are really interested in SAP or ERP, the best way for you to get into this is join a company. My advice is work in a particular domain for at least 4 to 5 years. Let the company only sponsor you for the course and certification so that you can stay risk free throughout your career. Most of the companies who hire freshers in the name of SAP train these candidates only for a support based job because to develop a SAP based application you need a huge domain level expertise. So as a fresher you might have to work for even day shift, evening shift and night shift. So be ready. For the students who are already selected in campus interviews, if at all you want to escape from these shift jobs, I suggest you to start learning Java, JWE, web designing, database, JavaScript, software testing and so on what we will be offering at Brainsmart Labs. In your company when you get posted, go to your HR and demand a job of your choice 
so that HR can post you in those streams where you are actually good at. That is correct. All I am saying is, rather than sitting months together in your resource pool, which is famously known as the bench, if you learn the above programming skills what I have mentioned, you will have a sound career tomorrow. Dude, I am an electronics engineering student. As you said, there are only 5-10% to job openings in India for this field. Are you suggesting me not to go there by making me learn Java? System side programming, as I said, it can only support 5 to 10% of the current day job market, as most of the R&D and manufacturing companies are placed in countries like US and China. In India, openings are very less for now, but if it is your passion, you can still pursue the same and no one here is stopping you to do so. But if it is some brother-sister advice, seriously boss, I cannot help you. Only they should save you from the misery and I cannot intervene in between. For people who are really interested in electronics and networks, please do a course on C, C++, Embedded Systems, VLSI or CCNA for you to pursue your career over there. You do not require any programming languages like Java, HTML or SQL as this is a totally a different ball game. But if you are looking at job security and you always want to be on a safer side, you can continue taking up our course on Java and in parallel you can achieve your other goals side by side. Any knowledge, any time is always helpful. It's your choice. Dude, why are you suggesting Java JW over c .net? We can build a web-based application even using .NET, no? Ayo Guru, I am not at all saying don't pursue .NET. All I am saying is most of the companies today are using Java to build their web-based applications. Forget about web applications. If you are learning Java, you can also move into Android programming. Suppose tomorrow you feel programming is not your cup of tea. Then you can move into Selenium testing where you again require Java. You want to shift your career into data analytics by learning Hadoop Big Data, there also you require Java. Java has a wide scope today as it is an open source language. It is very simple to work with and it is very well structured for building an application. Dude, there are other simple languages like PHP, Joomla, Python, Ruby. Doesn't these add up to our programming skills? In today's job market, only chota mota companies who work on building chikka putta websites work on PHP, Joomla, Ruby, etc. If you want a sound career tomorrow and achieve something big in life, start with Java and rest will follow you tomorrow. Dude, one last question. What is cloud computing? Does this have scope in the market today? Anything in IT has scope provided you are very much passionate about it. Long before in those days, when a company had finished building an application, it had to launch and prepare an infrastructure to host that application. Infrastructure? Like what? To host an application, first of all you need a server. The size of a server actually depends on number of hits your application was gonna take. Once the server was ready, you needed an air-conditioned room with 24 bar 7 power supply as your server needed to be powered up all the time. Later, you needed a static IP with high-speed internet connection to receive requests and deliver response to all your potential users. On top of that, you needed to pay a support engineer who had to look after your entire setup 24 bar 7. All these infrastructure costs would have come up to rupees 1 crore if at all you wanted to launch this application all by yourself. Now just imagine. If no one uses your application or you won't get much revenue from the application what you have launched, what would have happened to all your money? Hey, to avoid such problems, few enterprises have started renting their servers on a monthly basis like $200, $300, which are now called as cloud servers. Oh, cloud and the other? No, Akash the least satellite in the no burute and pundi de Nitalakai burude. Here in this cloud, they will be providing us an entire infrastructure on a monthly rental basis for a specific amount of usage. With the cloud setup in place, there is no major risk to take as you will be spending only a small amount of money as monthly installment just to see what is the traction your application is getting. Okay. So if we are in cloud sector, what exactly we will be working on? Support, support and just support. You might also have to work on various shifts and as an employee, you should always be ready for it. Oh, bah. Thanks, Macha. You have really opened my eyes on what is IT industry today. 
I am now completely satisfied. I will start watching your videos on basic core Java right from tomorrow. Le le, tadkala salpa, guru, neen hello. Why should we do a course anyway? Won't we get a job just like that? Nimugulge, yes, tell other prajanaila. You do one thing. After your engineering, you come to Bangalore, take on bus pass, and daily visit one company. You give your resume to that watchman sitting there and keep expecting that you will be called. You might land up in a few interviews, but I am 100% sure you are definitely going to fail, as you don't know anything what the companies are working on today. That is correct. You are not able to understand one basic concept here. Without skills, nobody will give you a job, as the companies are hiring only skilled resources today. If you sit in the position of HR, you will understand. All fresh resumes will be having only one common thing. Languages known? C, C++, Java. Our resume known? C, C++, Java. You will resume known? C, C++, Java. I mean, you know Java? I know everything. Overloading, overriding. All of you have a resume known? I will copy it and copy it and copy it and copy it. ತಗೊಂಡೋಗಿ ತಿಪ್ಪೆಗೆ ಬಿಸಾಕಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ರೆಸ್ಯೂಮೇನ ಈಗ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇನ್ ಕೇಳಿ ಏನು ನೆಟ್ಟಕ್ಕಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ರೆಸ್ಯೂಮೇನಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಹಾಕಕ್ಕೆ ಹೋಗ್ಬೇಡಿ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಯ್ತಾ ಬಾಬು ಒಕ್ಕ ಡೌಟು ವೈ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಲರ್ನ್ ಜಾವಾ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ ವೈ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪಿ ಗೋ ಟು ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ಔಟ್ ದರ್ ಚಿನ್ನು ವೆಲ್ ನು ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ಗೆ ಯಾವರ ಆಪತ್ತು ಉನ್ನಾರೋ ದೆರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಇನ್ ಸಾಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ತೃಷ್ಟಿತ ಜಾಹ್ನವಿ ತೀರೆ ಕೂಪಂ ಖನಾತಿ ದುರ್ಮತಿ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ತರ್ಸ್ಟಿ you start digging a well even though river ganga is beside you my point is when everything is provided to you online why do you have to come to the city roam around to select a best institute and pay so much money for the pg you want to spoil your parents hard earned money means i have no issue i exactly know where you will all end up in the name of pocket money I always call your parents to send you dubbo when all your dubbo gets exhausted your parents will start pressurizing you in company dorakleda in company dorakleda ಜಾಬ್ ಎಪ್ಪುಡು ದೊರಕ್ತುಂದಿ ಜಾಬ್ ಎಪ್ಪುಡು ದೊರಕ್ತುಂದಿ ಇದಂತಾ ಕಾವಲ ಬಾಬು ನೋ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಅ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಹೂ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಅ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅಮೀರ್ಪೇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಟಿಲ್ ಒನ್ ಇಯರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಹಿ ಡಿಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದ ಮನಿ ಟು ಪೇ ಫಾರ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಿ ಜಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇಸ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಕೆಪ್ಟಾನ್ ಆಸ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಜಾಬ್ ಎಪ್ಪುಡು ದೊರಕ್ತುಂದಿ ಜಾಬ್ ಎಪ್ಪುಡು ದೊರಕ್ತುಂದಿ ಬಿಲೀವ್ ಮೀ ಹಿ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಡಿಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಆಸ್ ಇ ಡಿಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಜಾಬ್ ಅಟ್ ಅ ರೈಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟೇ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಹೋಮ್ ಟೌನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಾಚ್ ಯುವರ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋಸ್ I need not come to city till I have a proper skill set. Searching for a job also would be meaningful and easy as I'll be saving a lot of my parents hard earned money on PGs, institutes and living expenses. Thanks. Naaku ippudu gnanadayam ayindi. From tomorrow onwards I will start watching your videos in my hometown. Guru, one nimsha. You are advising us not to go to any institute. What if we get any doubt in between? In institute means there will be a teacher and so many friends to help around. Here in this video whom do we have well we have done a series of tests on many students while working on our course material based on valid tests and evidences 90% of the students did not get any doubt till the end of the course my point is anyways the next 15 videos are free i kindly advise you to watch it before coming to a conclusion at any point of time you get any doubt just whatsapp your doubt to this number and we will solve it for you remember you understanding the subject is our topmost priority devra visya adalla you think we all go to institute to learn java chance illa in institute they give us 100% placement we get both benefits of training and placement in a single place na idike neithiya hu 100% kodtar chip ond artha madko its your ability which will help you to get a job not any institute or the dabba placement drive they conduct You know what is happening there in the name of placement? The institute owner will give a nice enne party to the HR and the HR manager will arrange a mega placement drive only for the students of that institute. 300 400 students are taken in bus and only students with good communication and percentage are selected. Rest of them will get only baba ji ka thullu. Like that you will be sent to four five interviews. After failing in all interviews you will tell sir chanagi pata madidru. Adre yen madadu? Nan bad luck. Nan kelsa ni siglilla. ಅಲ್ಲ ಏನ್ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಪಾಠ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಇನ್ನೂರ್ ಮುನ್ನೂರ್ ಜನಕ್ಕೆ ಆತರ ಮೈಕ್ ಹಾಕೊಂಡು ಹರಚಿದ್ರೆ ಪಾಠ ಮಾಡೋದು ಅಷ್ಟರಲ್ಲೇ ಇದೆ ಒನ್ ಅವರ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಲವತ್ತೈದು ನಿಮಿಷ ಬರೀ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ 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 ನಾನು ಅವನಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ನಾನು ಇವಳಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಅವ್ರು ಬಂದ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಇವ್ರು ಬಂದ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರು ಕರ್ಮ ಇನ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಏಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಅಂಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಗ
ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ತಲೆ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ಎನಿ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದೇ ಗಿವ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಹವಾ ಯು ಫ್ಲೈ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಹವಾ ಒನ್ ಡೇ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಧೊಪ್ಪನೆ ಫಾಲ್ ಡೌನ್ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಯ್ತಾ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಯ್ತು ಗುರು ತಪ್ಪೋಡ್ತಾಯ್ತು ಇಷ್ಟು ದಿವಸ ನಮ್ಮ ತಲೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ವಾಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ರೂರಲ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಬಿಗ್ ಬಿಗ್ ಐ ಟಿ ಕಂಪನೀಸ್ ಓನ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮರ್ಸ್ ಹೊಟ್ಟೆ ಬಟ್ಟೆ ಕಟ್ಟಿ ನಮ್ಮ ಮನೆಲ್ಲ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಓದಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಜಾಬ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಅವರ್ ಪೇರೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಅಪ್ಸೆಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ದೇ ವಿಲ್ ಬ್ಲೇಮ್ ಅಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಡಿನ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ವೆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಗೇಟ್ ಹಿ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಟಿ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಫೋಸಿಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಟು ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಗೇಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಅಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಸಾರಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾವು ಟೋಟಲಿ ಕನ್ವಿನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಟುಮಾರೋ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಾಚಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಜಾವ ಆಲ್ ಬೈ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಗೆಟ್ ಎನಿ ಡೌಟ್ ಇನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಸೆಂಡ್ ಯು ಅ ವಾಟ್ಸ್ಆ್ಯಪ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಸಿ ಹೌ ದೀಸ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಡೇಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಯಾಟಿಸ್ಫೈಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೀ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಲ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮೋರ್ ಕೆನ್ ಗೋ ಮೈ ಟೂ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ಪರ್ ಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಐ ಬೈ ನಾವು ದಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೈ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಕರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಸೆಮ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹಾಲಿಡೇಸ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಟೂ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮಿಂಗ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಗೆಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಪರ್ಚೇಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೇಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಆನ್ ಅವರ್ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಪಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ವ್ಯೂಸ್ ಡೂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಡಸ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟೇಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಲಾಗ್ಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಜಾಬ್ ನೋ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟೇಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಲಾಗ್ಸ್ ಡೂ ನಾಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಜಾಬ್ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಜಾಬ್ ಇಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸ್ಕಿಲ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಎಲ್ಸ್ as i have said before the company is running a business and not some dharmachatra that is correct if they want to train you as a fresher they have to first make sure that you are capable enough to learn what they teach but companies keep criteria for selection right candidates with only 60% above are allowed no students with backlogs are allowed now why is that fresher interviews these days are basically interviews for rejection and not an interview for selection it is all because of you you know adakku nave karana na yes imagine a software company which has 40 openings they call you for a walk in campus drive and nearly 3000 candidates arrive at that spot oh no as i said before all your resumes contain only one thing c c++ java now how will the hr find a right candidate the only option for them is to filter first they give cut off as 60% aggregate 1500 candidates are out next they give a tough aptitude test and here 750 candidates are out for the remaining 750 candidates they make you do group discussion in that 500 candidates out and for the remaining 250 candidates they conduct an actual interview and select the best 40 neeve heli ta power da nimda okay now how can we get into a company <laughs> don't worry startup culture is now booming all over india and believe it or not these companies are giving competition to big big it giants today These startup companies won't consider your aggregate into account as they only see your talent and technical ability which overall accounts to your skill set. My advice is work there as an intern for at least 1 year and slowly gain some experience. After 2 years, move out of that company for a better salary and a better opportunity. Problem solved. And for the students who are having an year back in engineering, please don't feel disheartened. Think it is a blessing in disguise. In fact this is a time you need to dedicate your valuable time for gaining new skill sets. Trust me. By the time you pass out you will be giving competition to your current batch mates as they also have to gain the same skill set after their degree. So, are you all ready to watch our next videos? Yes, yes boss